Problem one, what you notice in this question is where's the bromine getting added? It's getting added to the benzylic carbon. And so as you study react reactions with benzylic carbons, you will see that answer D is going to give us that, um, that product there. Okay. Question two, <clears throat> which of the following halides will not work? <coughs> if you take a look at it, what's the requirement? The halogen has to be attached to a, a carbon that is sp3 hybridized for the Friedel-Crafts alkylation. Friedel-Crafts acylation, the halogen can be attached to a sp2 carbon. But that's a different reaction. This one using that reagent, that's Friedel Crafts acylation. With alkylation, it can only be sp3 hybridized carbons. So that's sp3, 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 sp2. So that that one will not work. Here we're looking at a Dills Alder product or reaction here. <clears throat> One interesting or a key feature of Dills Alder is that when you look at the the diene, the dienophile right here, do you notice the stereochemistry between these two carboxylic acids? They are what? They're trans to one another. And so that stereochemistry has to be retained in the uh, product. And so when we look at product three, we see that those right there, those are cis. Those are trans, and those are also trans. So you can have, uh, so products one and two are both the same thing. So why are we showing two of those products there? Because, well, what if you change the problem up a little bit? What if you had your Diana file that looked like that, but then stuck a different one right there? Okay. And then let's stick a methyl right there. If you did that, what would your major products be? Well, we see that the nitrile and the carboxylic acid have to be trans to one another. So you could have a situation where your methyl and your carboxylic acid are going to be ortho to one another, and then your nitrile here is going to have to be up like that. So you have that isomer right there. Okay. You could also have it switched. You could have had it like this, where the nitrile is now in the ortho, okay? And then the carboxylic acid would be trans to that. So that's why there's two answer choices like that in that problem is because both of these groups right here are electron withdrawing. So both of those would want to be, or can be in the ortho position or ortho with respect to the that methyl group, okay? So for question three, the answer would be A. What is the product of the following reaction with potassium permanganate? Well, this one, nothing's going to happen because once again, we are focusing our attention on the benzylic carbon. And in order to do an oxidation to convert a benzylic carbon into a carboxylic acid, you have to have at least one hydrogen on the benzylic carbon. And since that's a tert-butyl group, there's no hydrogens on this carbon right there. Hence, no reaction can occur. Which is the least reactive in a Dills-Alder reaction? Now here, we have to... Uh, 
take a look at how do the dienes react in a Diels Alder. Well, this is a S trans conformation. That's also an S trans. That's S trans. And this is S trans as well. So in order to really understand their reactivity, we have to take a look at them in their S cis conformation. Okay. And so the best way to do that, for me anyway, is I, we have to do some rotation. Okay. And this, either you see it, and it can be rather quick, or it takes some time, okay? Because we just have to visualize this in three dimensions here. So let's take a look. So we'll take a while here to just process this whole problem. Okay, so let's take, we have to come clear over here. So let's take molecule one and redraw it. Okay, so we have molecule one, and I'm gonna draw it like, how it's shown like that and then we have molecule two molecule three let's do it like this molecule one molecule two molecule three looks like this And then molecule four. Okay. So we need to get these dienes in the S cis conformation. So what I like to do, just so I can see it better. Um, well, let's do it this way actually. What we're going to do is just rotate around that single bond right there, okay? And what does that look like? And in order for me to really rotate, I need to understand the relationships between everything. So I'm going, whoops. So what I want to do is draw in my hydrogens and just label them because they're gonna help me keep track of where things are, okay? So if I rotate around this bond right here, okay, let's represent that bond with that green. I'm gonna keep the left side constant. I'm not gonna rotate that. So my HA is still there. And then we have our double bond coming down, HD and my methyl this way, okay? Now, I'm going to rotate it in such a way that I want the double bond on the other side, this side, to be in the S cis. So that would have to come down like this. Now with respect to that green bond there, do you see how the, the two double bonds are on the same side of that green bond? So that is the S cis conformation. Now I just need to keep track of where these hydrogens are and where the methyl is. Okay, so where is HC? Do you see how in relationship to HB that they're trans to one another? Okay, so our HB is going to have to be right here. HB has to be right there. And What's the relationship between HB and HC? They're trans to one another. So HC has to be trans, and so my methyl is over there, like that. And so once I got that, I kind of just click, get rid of the hydrogens so I can see the product a little bit better. Okay, so that's what that product looks like right there. So if we do the same thing, for two, there's our green bond. Okay, I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave the left side constant. I'm not gonna change that at all. I have an HA here, I have an HB 
right there for references. And now our double bond now is going to be like that. So with respect to where's that HA, it has to be right there. And we see HB and HA are trans to one another. So that's where HB is. So my methyl has to be right there. Like that. Now we clean that up, get, getting rid of the hydrogens there. That's kind of what we're up against right there. Okay, let's keep going. We'll look at that bond right there. We'll keep the left side constant. So we have a methyl there and a double bond right there. We have HA. Well, that one doesn't matter now because there's nothing over here to worry about. So we can just simply just rotate. We're simply just going to rotate around that bond right there to get us our alkene like that. Okay. And then ran out of space here, so we'll just do it down here. So this is the bond of interest. We'll just leave it as drawn. We'll leave the left side constant or unchanged. And we're going to rotate around this bond right there. So let's just keep track of our hydrogens here. There's our HA, there's our HB. So when we rotate around that green bond there, we are going to have our, we want it, we want the S cis. This is going to be our HA. So what, what's the relationship between HA and HB? We see that they're cis to one another. So HB has to be right there. So that means the methyl is pointing that way. Okay. So those are the the S we've converted all the S trans conformations of the dienes into our S cis. And now we can evaluate these guys right here to see which one's going to be the most reactive, okay? And we have to deal with sterics and what has the least amount of sterics, okay? So what did it say here? The question, which of the following is the least reactive? So if we're looking at the least reactive, then we want to find something that has the most sterics. And we can see that we have two methyl groups right here on the inside of that concave. And since they're on the inside there, you're going to have all this steric clash between those two methyls right there. And that steric clash is going to make this guy not a very stable conformation. And since it's not a very stable conformation, it, it won't want to even be in this conformation. But in order to do a dills auto reaction, you have to have the diene in the S cis conformation. But because this conformation is required to do the reaction, but it's so unstable, the reaction is going to go really, really, really slow because you're not going to have very much of this conformer. You're going to have the majority of it, this guy right there. And, then, and in that conformation in the square, that cannot do a dills alder reaction. So that problem requires you to do a lot of rotation and understanding S cis and S trans. So the correct answer would be D. Question six. Okay. When you look at question six, people just freak out a little too soon because what if, what, what would you do if I severed that bond right there? What would the reaction mechanism be if you looked at it this way, All right? So if we had this bond like 
that. Okay. See how I just severed that bond and now I have the two separate pieces? How would you do that reaction? Well, you know, I'll do the short condensed version. You know that's going to come in right there and attack that carbon, right? Well, granted, you need the Lewis acid to activate it first, right? So I'm skipping the mechanism, but I'm just showing you the overall what's going to happen. That's going to attack that carbon to give you this product right here. You would get... One, two, three, four. There. One, two, three, four carbons. That's the product you would get. So just do the same thing when it's attached up here. All right. We take a look and say, hey, those pi electrons, now I'm skipping steps, right? Because I'm not showing the full mechanism, but we have to activate that by reacting it with the aluminum trichloride once you have that intermediate, then the, well, we could do, actually, the way it's drawn, we could just show that real quick. Ah, never mind. So ultimately, what's going to happen here? We're going to take those pi electrons and attack that uh, carbonyl carbon. Okay. And so how big is the ring going to be? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to form a six-membered ring. And so if we look at a six-membered ring there, then we, we can definitely say that's off the table. And that's off the table. And so where should that carbonyl be? If we number the carbons in our product, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then this would have to be carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how the numbers on this guy doesn't match those numbers over there? Because carbon six, when you look at the mechanism here, carbon six is forming a bond with carbon one. Okay, but carbon six is part of the benzene ring. And so that leaves us only with that as our possible answer choice. Okay, number seven, carbon 13 NMR. Just have to find our equivalent uh, carbons here. So without looking at the answers, just looking at how many signals would you predict? Well, I see a plane of symmetry right here. So those carbons have to be equivalent B, B, C, C. So that one has a total of three signals. There's also a plane of symmetry right down there. Okay, so we have A, B, B, and C. Wait, no. We're looking at carbons, right? So there's still a plane of symmetry. That doesn't take it away, nothing away from it. We're looking at carbon. So that's A, B, B, C, C, D. So that's four signals. What are we asking? What is the correct assignment? Okay. And then here again, we have another plane of symmetry. So we could say, hey, that's A, A, B, B, and B, and B. Because there's symmetry arguments there, so there's only two signals. Now we go to the answer choices and see what happens there. Three, four, two. That matches A. Okay, eight. What is the product of the following reaction? Well, there we see a benzylic carbon that has at least one hydrogen, potassium permanganate right there. That's going to oxidize that to give us benzoic acid. So that one. <clears throat> Which of the following ions is aromatic? Well, 
We have our seven-membered ring right there. That's the tropilium ion. And we, are, we just already know that one's aromatic. And you can convince yourself by saying, hey, the 4n plus 2, that's going to equal 6 electrons. So that's aromatic. Why is number 2 not aromatic? Because there are only 4 pi electrons. There's 4 pi electrons in that structure. And this one's not aromatic because we have a carbon here that's sp3 hybridized. So, answer A. What is the organic product for the Diels Alder reaction? Got to do our mechanism. Those go there, those go there, and those come and attack there. What's the relationship between that electron withdrawing group and that electron withdrawing group? They are cis to one another. Okay, um, so the way that's demonstrated there is looking at the hydrogens here. Do you see how we have two wedged hydrogens and then we have a mixture here? Okay, like that. So if we look at our mechanism right there, Where should, if we label, let's clean this up a little bit here, okay. I'm going to label this hydrogen as H1 and that one is H2, okay. Those are the ones that are on the inside. And what's the relationship supposed to be between, let's say, H3 and the electron withdrawing groups? They're supposed to be on the same side. Okay, and so that's H1 and that's H2. And H3, okay, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. No, those are not those. Let's scratch that. But when we first look at the answer choices there, we see that the, the hydrogens have different orientations here. So where are, let's backtrack here. These hydrogens that are clearly what's being shown and what's different, where are those hydrogens on the starting materials? Okay, let's start that over. They're actually these guys right here. And what's the relationship between those two hydrogens? with respect to that alkene. Do you see how they're cis to one another? So they have to be on the same side of the product, okay? And so wedge, wedge, <clears throat> all the other answer choices are showing that they're on opposite sides of one another. So the only, the correct answer is that guy. Remember the, the, Stereochemistry is retained on the dienophile. Okay. Okay, which of the following compounds is conjugated? That would have to be that guy. What is the major product of the following reaction? Another Dills Alder. Same mechanism. Go there, those go there, those go there. Okay, and so if we just draw our product without looking at the answer choices, what would it have to be? It would have to be something like this, double bond there. We have those carbons right here. Those guys are those two right there. <clears throat> And then those two carbons are those guys right there. But when you look at my mechanism, I only used one of the two pi bonds, so there's still a double bond right there. <clears throat> and then the carboxylic acids right there, they're gonna be, uh, 
Endo or Exo? They would have to be Endo. Like that. Endo. So now when we go look at our answer choices here, does anything make sense? This one's off the table because it only has one carbon. This one's off the table because it's missing that double bond. That's missing the double bond. That's the only possible answer. Question 13. What is the thermodynamic product obtained from the addition of one equivalent to one three butadiene? So you need to go butadiene. 1,3-butadiene right there, and then it says to do what? Take one equivalent of HBr. So we have to do that, do the mechanism. That's going to give us... Where are we going to add that hydrogen? Well, we want to add it in this manner because now we are going to get a secondary allylic intermediate. But in the question, it says the thermodynamic product right there. And so we have to draw ourselves a resonance structure because we want the thermodynamic product. So we'll take and draw a resonance structure. And so we would draw that resonance structure like that. The hydrogen right there. We have bromide that's floating around now. That's going to come in and attack that to give us our final product. You have to be careful though because we could draw it just like this we, because I don't have to draw in that hydrogen. But why, do, why am I drawing in the hydrogen? Because I want you to see that the thermodynamic product is more than often a 1-4 relationship. Okay. Because 1, 2, 3, 4. Wait, let's see. I'm messing that up, aren't I? The product. Yeah, I messed up the product. Let's redraw that product, shall we? So we have the butadiene right here, the hydrogen, and there we go. And we don't have to draw in those hydrogens. It could have just looked like that. But what's the relationship in the thermodynamic product? One, two, three, four. The bromine and the hydrogen that was added is in a one, four addition. So now that we have the product there, now we just have to remember how to name these things here. And I drew that wrong one more time, goodness. What a day. Right, there we go. One, two, three, four. Okay. So how do we name this compound? It'd be one, two, three, four. So one bromo, two, Butene. So that would be that guy. Which of the following statements about the mechanism of Dill's Alder is true? Well, before you start reading all that verbiage, why don't we just go to the most simple Al Dill's Alder reaction and do the mechanism? Okay. And so that's going to form that. So what has happened here? Two pi bonds break, two sigma bonds, and one by pi bond form. So when we look at the mechanism, what's happening? We f at the end of the day, we formed one pi bond, and we formed these two sigma bonds right there. And so 14, and how many pi bonds move around when we look at the 
reactant side, those, boom, boom. So three pi bonds rearrange, or technically they break because they're reacting. So the correct answer here, three pi bonds break, two sigma bonds, and one pi bond form. So that would be answer D. What is the hybridization state of that oxygen? Just got to remember that if you have a structure or a heteroatom, how many groups are around that oxygen atom? Well, there's one, two, three, four. So many people would think sp3. But you have to remember that if you can draw a resonance structure, okay, like that, be negatively charged that has to be positively charged that, that would have to be neutral sorry like that now when you take a look at that same oxygen atom right here you can see that, that now there's only three groups so when that happens you just go with the the smaller of the two hybridization states and that would be sp2 hybridized what is the IUPAC name of the following compound? Well, when we take a look at that benzene, is um, that benzene derivative, is there a common name that we could give it? Yeah, because of that group right there, that makes it a benzoic acid. So that makes that the priority carbon one. So how do we number this? We number it in a way to give the second substituent the lowest locant number. So it has to go this way. So we are looking at a 3-chloro and a 4-nitro. And does anything match that? That would be answer B. What is the best choice of reagent to bring about the following transformation? Okay. Now it says the best. Okay. That could do it, but that requires uh, just more uh, harsh conditions than if we used A. A right there is the Clemenson reduction. And that's easier to do than just hydrogen and palladium on carbon. Okay. So the correct answer for this one would be A. Okay. Which of the following conjugated dienes represents two conformations? Here we can redraw them if we like, like I did previously with the other problems. But really, we just want to get the conformations looking the same. And so I just made a judgment call. It's not right or wrong. It's just what I did. I wanted to make all my molecules kind of look like this part right there where I wanted the sigma bond or the single bond horizontal and I wanted the double bonds coming off like that okay and then the substituents coming off of these carbons we have to figure out when we do that rotation and so when I went and did all this when you take a look at molecule two it it looks like when I rotate around this single bond right here, because we, I want to look at them all in S cis, that molecule is going to look like this. Just like that. When I rotate around that single bond, we get to that. When I rotate around this single bond right there, what are we going to get? We're going to have our double bonds, just like I said we would. And then our methyl groups there and methyl group there. Okay, there. So now comparing this guy, this guy, and this guy right there, do you see any two molecules that are identical to one another? And you can see that compounds two and three are identical to one another. So that would have to be answer choice B. Which of the following heterocycles is not aromatic? Well, when we look at this oxygen, dioxygen containing species right there, how many pi electrons do we count? Two, four, six, eight. So that is anti-aromatic. 
right there. So all the others would be aromatic because they this guy right here has six pi electrons. That has six pi electrons, and so does that. This is the only one that has eight pi electrons. So that is the one that is not aromatic. Okay, what is are the major products or product of the following reaction? Now, how do you do these addition reactions? You have to draw the mechanism so you can see the possible answer choices. Okay, so if we start off, let's draw our mechanism. Okay. What would we do here? One equivalent, HBr. So that's going to come in, grab a proton. Now, where am I going to put that? Begs the question here. Let's just test it out. I'm going to put the hydrogen here. So that gives a carbocation there. And so we have our secondary allylic. So that's valid. And so that would, when we do our bromide, Right here, where would that attack? That would attack that carbon, carbocation, to give us this product. Br. That's an option. Well, let's let's not look at the products actually quite yet. I'm going to let's just look at the uh, the carbocations. Okay. What if I decided to put the hydrogen here instead? That would give me a carbocation right there. That's the secondary carbocation. Okay. So we have secondary allylic. We have secondary. But what's what we what I notice here though is I have a hydrogen right here that maybe I could do a hydride shift. What if I did a hydride shift? Then the hydrogen would now be there. Nope, th take that back, sorry. We put the hydrogen there. Oh, now that's messy. And our original hydrogen that we added was that guy. We have our double bond there. And now we have a tertiary carbocation. Would that be a valid possibility? And so that would correspond to that product. Like that. This one would correspond to this guy right there. And then that guy would turn into. This guy, like that. Okay. So what did any of my predicted products, did any of those show up in the answer choices? Okay. So did this guy right here show up in any of the answer choices? No. Okay, so we can just not worry about this guy. Okay. Um, so it's just those two, based off of the mechanism that I chose, do I see any of those possible answer choices there? So this guy right here, 
Where is that in the answer choices? So we have the bromine that's next to a double bond. So that one would be number two. All right. And then this guy right here. Does that match? That's two spots away from the double bond. And that would be... That'd be one. Is that the same thing there? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's... Looks like I've made a mistake because I put that double bond in the wrong... Let's... Let's see here. We, we also have to consider, there's another consideration that we have to make. So let's get rid of this guy. Okay. So when we have this structure right here, okay, I'm gonna redraw that. Another structure that we have to consider is when we add the hydrogen there, what do we have? We have a secondary allylic. So we can have a resonance structure, which those pi bonds can go there. Like that, hydrogen added there, double bond there. So now where's the carbocation going to be? Right there. And so then the bromine would be added. Like that. Okay. Now we have another possible product, which I see is number four. So we have one two, and four based off of my mechanism. Three is just nonsense, really. That's not how addition reactions work with dienes. So we only have those three options there. But it says, what is the major product? Okay. So I think that's the kicker in the language right there because all three of those that I came up with are possible products. But which ones are going to be the major products? Well, the ones that are going to be the major are going to come from the most stable carbocation. And the most stable carbocation would have to be the secondary allylic. So those correspond to product two and product four. So the only answer choice would be A. Okay. So I hope that is helpful to, to you guys.